I'm excited to talk about this guy. Yeah. Really excited to talk about this guy. This is another one of those young prospects that's just, he's impressed from afar and it looks like some opportunity might come his way in 2024. We are talking about Jackson Bins, born on the 29th of October, 2004. It's a young lad, Paul. Just 19 years old, man. Very young. He's very young. Yes. Uh, Yet to play but had a really, really good debut season at the club yeah. Yeah. and in particular in the in the, in the the reserves team. So let's talk a bit about him. Let's unpack Jackson Beans. What does the year look like for him? Yeah, yeah. well, pushing into the senior team, I think that's definitely uh, the first carrot that's going to be dangled down in front of him. And, you know, he's got, he's got a bit of work to do because he's got some pretty good wingers to compete with. And I think that's only going to be a benefit to his uh, football career. He's got Akers, he's got Cottrell. Um, and he's got uh, who have I missed out on? Who's the other winger? Holland. That's right. He's got Holland to go. I can't forget Ollie. Dear me. So he's got all them to compete with too. And then he's also got other guys who aren't pure wingers that do rotate through there. So Walsh, Chera, they all do rotate through there as well on um, on given occasions. So there will be an opportunity for him. I have no doubt about that. Whether mm-hmm. it's based on a rotation of the squad, whether it's based on injury, there's going to be there's going to be a chance for him if he mm-hmm. stays fit. Um, and he's got a beautiful grounding to head into his second season with. There's no sucking because he's been in the VFL. It's a case of no, this is your area for the time being. You go and work on your defense, the defensive craft of your game, and then you know the rest of that will flow on. So. Um, one thing that we do know is that he, he knows where the ball is. <laughs> that's that's one yeah. thing we can't knock. Yeah, no, there's, look, there's. <clears throat> I feel like there's a lot to talk about with someone here that hasn't played a game because mm. when you go to training, you watch mm. him. He's, he's mm. just at every contest, it seems. He's everywhere. He's available. He's fit. Mm. Um, what did you what was your summary of his VFL form like from the start of the year to the end like how did his development happen in your lens yeah well i think for for me the i think the defensive aspect of his game improved a hell of a lot which is something i think when you're a young fella and you come into the competition and you're a winger and you're winning the ball that's that's something that you always want to that's what you want to do you want to you want to feel leather on your hands mate when you're a kid you know, and, and coming into a new football club in your first season, you want to be able to show the coaches that you, you've got the capability of getting from contest to contest and getting big numbers with regards to accumulating the ball. But that also has to be not curtailed. It also has to be complemented by your defensive game too. Um, you know, Voss, Voss was adamant about that when we were going through our bad patch that it was defensively where we were not doing the right thing. So, and that will fuel him going forward too. For me, like the, the one thing I want to look at with him too is, uh, how he hits the scoreboard as well, which he did in patches throughout the VFL too. So, you know, and he did win our VFL best and fairest. So to, to come in your first season in a new system, in a new environment, and to be the VFL best and fairest for 2023, I think that's, that's a pretty big feather in the cap. For Massive. Him. It just shows, At 18 yeah, it years just, old. I know, it's crazy. It shows his professionalism. It shows he's yeah. willing to work on what he needs to work on and earn the respect of the guys who were above him and, and earn his spot in the team. And, you know, we always speak about, what do we speak about often? What's always been the the speaking point? Every bloody Thursday in season, selection integrity. What? I just, <laughs> selection integrity. I don't know, mate. I never know what that means, selection integrity. Does it mean that you deserve your spot in the team or is it just based on what you think you know? You know, yeah. which is, you know, I think it's an ignorance within a lot of us that is just, you know, it's it's almost blinding to a certain point. He is the epitome of selection integrity. Everyone was calling for him. He's got to play. He's got to play. He's got to play. But the coaches and the selection committee just said, no, no, there's, there's enough there on the wing position to just hold him out. There's no rush with him. Let him develop down in the VFL. And, you know, for, for me this season, the one thing that, and I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it on the Monday show, might be a bit cheesy and corny, but I love. I just love his. I love his. Uh, the character, the energy, the buzz, the the smile, the the jovial and convivial, you know, professionalism that he brings to the team. I think so. Um, great runner, finished top 
five in the time trial. I think he was yeah. second. Yeah, That's yeah, it. huge, huge, massive, massive. That's clearly an improvement on 2022. Um, yeah. You know. I think he also represents a change within the club in the last five years. So it's interesting. A couple of seasons ago before we had – uh, solved the wing issue. Had he been drafted, yeah. he would have played probably straight away in his first season. And that was the story yeah. of a lot of our draftees five yeah. years ago, six, yeah. seven, eight years ago. Like yeah. you get drafted, we're in this phase of our rebuild and you just, you play games and apparently they'll pay us back. He's a bit yeah. different. We we get to really put a plan together for him. He gets to hit <clears throat> milestones every mm. season and by the mm. time he plays i mean th the journey for him looks like it's a development journey mm. until he's mm. you know knocking down the door and then when we yeah. need him he'll come in and hopefully he'll stay in the side and then become a regular contributor whatever that looks like yeah. for the rest of the side is what it is but it just it feels good to know that we don't have to rush the process and it's fascinating yeah. you just mentioned it on yeah. thursday every it seemed like every week oh why isn't bins playing well we don't need bins to play yet yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah, exactly you right. Yeah, yeah. There's no point. You don't. You don't want to force the issue on the kid. And, and I think mm. the one player that I wanted to mention too, and he comes from an opposition club, but it, they're not. Look, they're they're not, they're not similar positions or anything like that. But I just look at him and I think, oh, okay, that's what I understand is the whole VFL. Do your apprenticeship, apply your trade, and then you're ready for it. Tom Atkins did it at yes. Geelong. Great call. VFL. True for such a lot for you know a prolonged period of time and when he hit the team is ready and you know now he's, he's a gun premiership player for the cats um you know i'm hoping something similar will happen with bins he, he's he's a lot younger than what atkins is obviously but he's got a great grounding to hit season 2023 uh, season 2024 with as well so um he played nearly every game in the vfl which is fantastic so it just shows that you know that the rigors for an 18-year-old and a 19-year-old of VFL, he can clearly handle it. Now it's taking the step up to the next level. And he does remind me of Ollie Hollands because of his aerobic capacity. He'll be able to get from contest to contest at AFL level. So he won't be one of these players that looks lost or anything like that. It's your ability to get from contest to contest will make you seen at the level, which is what Hollands does. And that's why he was in the team straight away because his running capability was phenomenal. And the way... And the angles which with, with which he attacked the contest that were were second to none. So, um, you know, it's it's a good spot for him to be in. I think the carrot's still dangled out there in front of him. He's very hungry and he sees the pathway there as all right. There's an opportunity for me to play clearly. So, mm -hmm. um, he'll 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 be playing this year. There's no doubt about it. He will yeah. definitely be playing this year. It's exciting. You know what else is is in, I find interesting? These draftees that come to the club pretty much 2022, 2023, mm. you know, they, they come to a club and there's not as much, uh, the word I've been thinking of is trauma. Like you don't have this trauma, this angst yeah. and this frustration, you know, yeah. like you come into the club now, it's, you mentioned his energy. It's like he can mm. be upbeat and yeah. provide that spark. We're not a, a fan base anymore that he's you know so built up with this yeah. anger like we were in years gone by and i yeah. i do wonder what that will do for draftees coming to the club yeah. because in in one sense there's less pressure uh it depends how you look mm. at it there might be more pressure because we're a contender and you know mm. we're in that bracket now where we could win a premiership but I, I just feel like with these draftees that come in they don't have to play straight away so that's where i feel like there's a little little bit of a, a release yeah. and they don't have to feel the anger that we had been feeling for so many yeah. years. Yeah. Do you think that, and you know, it, it, this will get back into it. Um, it's a pathway back to it, but do you think playing the youngsters for the sake of playing the youngsters back when we started all of this was to their detriment to, to, to a point, I would say to a point it's, it's almost like lambs to the slaughter, which it was to a certain point. You know? Yeah, I mean, there were certain players that I feel like it was good for them to throw them in the yeah. deep end. Yeah. But uh, there were some yeah. that, if you look back now, I mean, yeah, had we put even six VFL games to start their career yeah, yeah. and then put them in, I, I mean, it's all speculative. I do wonder what course, difference that would have made. But yeah, yeah I, I do feel that totally. It, it's, it's, it's just a curiosity of mine 
because of the way we're doing it now with these with the with the kid like Jackson bins um and it might just I mean it's it's just purely now out of the fact that he's 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 not our best winger he's not part of our best wingers but he's part of a crew that that has definitely increased its standard and for me he, he's part of personally he's part of the strongest part on the ground for us mm. that that for me the wing position I think is our I think it's our strongest area at the moment, just comparing it to other, comparing it to other lists and comparing it to other teams. I, I think our wingers are amongst the, I would say top three in the competition. Just this, that brigade. Yeah. Well, he, I've got one for you. So we've done a preview on, you know, Kennedy. We'll touch on Hewitt yeah. at some yeah. point. We've got yeah. a, we've got a thick, strong midfield. And there's the argument of, oh, you can't yeah. play Kennedy, Hewitt, Cripps, because we're a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. Thick. Yeah. Running power is not there. Uh, Does the future look like something where you've got Hollands, Cottrell, Acres, Bins, Walsh in the same team? We're not so much of a, a powerful really? unit, yeah. but we're a running power unit. And yeah, that's where I think, I mean, this is maybe a question with an answer that comes in three years from now, but mm. is that where the evolution in the way we move the ball? It, um, it could, it could yeah. very well be. It could very well be. It's a lot of running power. Mm. Um, you know, don't, don't be, you know, don't be uh, conned into thinking Ollie Hollands isn't hard, or that he can bump players off the ball. He's 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 got a nous and a knack of being able to do that, and he's got he got balls of steel. That kid, you know, to to he drop does. back into the fly to Lynch and Jeremy Cameron. I mean, you've got 195 centimeter, 95 kilo blokes who don't do that. You know, mm. he'd be about 70 kilos, ringing wet. With Ollie Holland. So looking at bins, one thing I don't think he, he, he never shirked the task in BFL at the contest or anything like that. His outside game's really, really strong. And maybe he will be part of a team that, you know, Walsh and Akers and Cottrell and Hollands, and, and he, maybe they will all play at any given time. Maybe there is a game where we'll, we'll try and run a team off their legs or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. It could very well be the case. The fact that you mentioned it has to be, has to be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's Binzi. He is a, a big question mark, but an exciting yeah. question mark. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Jackson Bins 2.0 looks like for us. Right. So I think we'll leave it there. He and, he and Jack home. Carroll. He and Jack Carroll, I think, are the most curious cases heading into 2024. That, from my mm. end, that's, that's how I see it. Mm. Well, let us know. Let's talk about Jackson Bins in the comments. What do you feel about him going into season 2024?